Well, good evening, listeners and viewers of Blues Moves Radio. We're here backstage in the Cullenberg Blues Festival with Lance Lopez, and he's had to go to the stage yet. It, it is a little bit rainy. Does it affect your playing, if you think, if it is raining a lot, Lance? Well, you know, I, I think as long as, as I don't get wet with the with the wireless battery pack, I think we're going to be all right. Otherwise, it's going to be some barbecue Lance Lopez guitar playing. <laughs> Hey, for our listeners, Lance Lopez, if you can describe your in one sentence, and you may all use the words you know, <laughs> what, what would it be? Well, I, I would just say it's, it's uh, you know, it's uh, hardcore Texas blues rock, you know. I mean, um, that's, uh, that's pretty much what I, what I, what I do, and uh, carrying on the tradition of, you know, uh, those before me, like ZZ Top and Stevie Ray Vaughan and Johnny Winter and... Uh, you know, all the guys and came out of Texas, you know, playing blues rock, you know. Um, definitely trying to keep that like going. Like said before, my name is Lance Lopez. I came all the way from Dallas, Texas to play some blues for y'all tonight. Y'all ready? Isn't it, isn't it hard to get in uh, Texas a place in the blues because in every joint has his own players who have to play everything before they even try to get allowed on stage? Yeah, uh, in Texas? Yeah. yeah, I mean it's you know it's 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 school. There, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's definitely a lot of uh, a lot of guitar players down in Texas, but there's a lot of different music in Texas. I mean you know of course there's country and western and uh, and there's a lot of heavy metal, believe it or not. And um, uh, you know, then of course blues and, and rock and alternative. I mean, we've got every every style of music there is there. But uh, as far as you know, um, yeah, I mean, you know, Austin's a, a, a little bit of a difficult scene, uh, but Houston and Dallas have have a, their own unique thing, you know, and and uh, you know, so it's uh, you know, it's definitely it's it's, it's own deal. You told me up front, the start of the interview, that you were uh, with Andy Timmons, the house band of the Blue Cat Blues in Deep Ellum. That was a pretty renowned blues joint in Dallas. It was uh, Blue Cat Blues was a, was an amazing. That was an amazing time period for the blues in the 1990s, and uh, I believe it opened around 1990 or 91, and and uh, continued on in the original location at Commerce and Good Latimer in Deep Ellum where, you know, Deep Ellum was a historical place where Robert Johnson and uh, Blind Lemon Jefferson and Lead Belly and a lot of different Delta guys would come and sit and play all afternoon and and make money, you know, they would they would, they would would make money on the street. So it was really a special thing for uh, uh, Blue Cat. It, it really, it really embodied that whole, that whole thing. So uh, it stayed there at the original location in, uh, until 99, then it moved across the street. But around 97 or 98, uh, I was playing guitar with Lucky Peterson, and when I would come off the road with Lucky, Andy Timmons was, was playing, it was the house band for six months, and then he would go on the road with Olivia Newton-John and play guitar with her, believe it or not. Yeah, was, you know, and great band. Simon Phillips was playing drums. It was amazing. And... Um, and so I would take and I would come off the road with Lucky Peterson. So I was kind of back and forth between Lucky Peterson and Buddy Miles. I was playing with both those guys at the time. So when I was off the road with either one of those guys, I was I was the house band. So there was a lot of monumental, um, a lot of monumental jam sessions and great things that happened at Blue Cat Blues. That means you were a full time musician, yeah. uh, bringing out your records, getting touring. Is it hard making a living, or do you get well now? Well, I mean, you know, you, you have to, you know, like anything, you have to budget yourself, and you know, um, if you really, if you line out a budget, it's it's not that hard, you know. Sometimes you can't, uh, you, you know, it's not about having everything you want; it's about having everything you need, you know. And and if you have that attitude, then yeah, you can live. But um, 
you know, you cut out a lot of things that cost a lot of money, <laughs> then yeah, you can you can you can do all right. I'm gonna give you a Traveling the world, uh, it's now Holland. Yeah. Where you did a couple of gigs. Yeah. Where are you heading next? Well, this is actually my last uh, my last show on on. Uh, I've been here all summer. I got over here the second week of July, so um, I've been. We've been all over. We've been in uh, Serbia. We've been in, um, you know, uh, Lithuania, Estonia, <laughs> Germany, France. I mean, we've been we've been crisscrossing. And going back and forth, so um, we ended the tour here, four shows in the Netherlands, and so um, I'm headed home Monday. So, is it is it better to play blues in in Europe than in America at the moment? You know, it's funny. I get asked that question a lot, and uh, it always has been. Um, it always has been. I mean, the blues was was uh, in a sense reintroduced from England to the United States in the late 60s and the early 70s. You know, I mean, it was brought back, you know, uh, via Cream and Led Zeppelin and the Rolling Stones. I mean, they brought it back, and this was stuff that was right in our backyard. You know, I mean, that we, you know, especially the area, I'm from Louisiana and Texas, so I mean, that's that's foundation of music for us, but when it was brought back in the blues rock is when it was commercially brought back in the late 60s and 70s. and. You know, me as a kid, that's how I discovered it. I mean, I would look at the Led Zeppelin albums and the Cream albums and see who wrote the songs, and then I would go find that person. And uh, so, I, you know, I think there's always been a giant appreciation here, and, and, it, and it shows when you when you come over and play. And like you said, there's blues radio stations. There's these giant festivals. I mean, that's to me, that makes my heart just sing, man. It just it makes me so happy that, that, that you know, the music's appreciated. We hope you, you, you do a good dig and uh, you do a good gig and come back soon. But if uh, Lance Lopez is starting with a blank sheet and then has to create a song, what's first? Well, a, a lick, a song, a lyric, a beat? Uh, yeah, a lot, well, a lot of times it, it, it depends. Sometimes I'll have a, a story and it usually, you know, because it's the blues, it's. Uh, Something that happened to me, you know, usually it's based on pretty bad relationships or something, 
bad that happens. So Broken I'll, chair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So uh, no, we. Uh, but I, I usually take a, you know, I take a, a, a situation that happened, you know, and and uh, and then kind of ride around that, and I'll try to put the music, you know, as to you know. Uh, line out the story you know that may set the mood of the story but it's usually that's that's uh, you know it's something that uh it's either happened to me or something i've seen happen or or uh you know my view on things you know and and just depending on whatever that is whatever you know i, I write as it comes to me so you know it's i don't sit down and go okay i'm gonna write you know song a b and c today and shoot for a uh, a number one thing, you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't write that way. I write as a song comes to me or as a riff comes. Sometimes I'll have a riff for two years before I do anything with it. And I'll, you know, slowly, I think it, it's, it's the best way as, as it comes to you to put this piece with this piece and, you know. Do you have any, any help from a band over? You say that a lot of guys who, who can sound more with so They help me with developing the song. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's there's a lot of friends uh, I definitely uh, definitely write with, um, you know, um, in Texas, you know, um, and I have a lot of you know guys I write with, and and really the last record I did uh, really um, working with Jim Gaines, the producer, was really uh, he did a uh, produce the Walter Trout record. Yeah, yeah, he's done. I mean, he's done. You know, I mean. It, <laughs> a lot of records. I mean, Steve Ray Vaughan, Santana, Steve Miller. I mean, it's uh, and and to have to work with Jim is really great because it takes my songwriting and condenses it and polishes it, and it's really it, it helps to work not only with a producer but a great producer. Yeah, that, that wants me. All. What's the the task of a producer for you? Because you had your song outlined, you go in the studio, you want to record it, and then somebody said, "If you do this and do this," you listen to him. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, you know, it's those kind of things, you know. It's it's um, especially somebody like Jim, you know. And I mean, to have that that type of objectivity, you know, not just you know, not just from a producer, but a great producer. And that's that's definitely you know where it, it, you, you see it start molding and shaping and polishing and becoming, you know, a, a musical piece of music. A gig, not just like tonight. How you you, you create it? Is there a strict set list, or do you improvise all the way? I, I uh, there is a set list and there are songs, but it's it's probably eighty percent eighty percent improvisation. I mean, a lot of it. I mean, I, I I do I have a song outline, but the solos are very stretched out, and the vocals I, I improvise pr improvise pretty much all the lead singing and lead guitar playing. So. Means you have a, a good backline, a good a good guys back, uh, the, the drummer, the bass player who have yeah. to read you if you yeah. go along. As long as as long as they, you know, as long as whoever's playing with me can hold a foundation, then I've got something I can I can build on. So, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's um, you know, it's it's very important. But a lot of it is improvisation. What's the future for Lance Lopez? Well, uh, in, in nearby. Well, I'm gonna uh, I'm headed back to the states this week, and I'm gonna. Have a little off time, and uh, you know I'm, I'm coming back over to Europe in October, November. Uh, we're doing uh, the Stevie Ray Vaughan Remembrance Ride in uh, Arlington, Texas, on the 3rd of October, which is Stevie Ray's birthday, and it's a it's a statewide holiday in Texas. It's actually the first Sunday in October is Stevie Ray Vaughan Day in Texas. So we have a big giant concert, and a lot of fellow Texas guitar players like Jim Schuler and West Jeans and. Um, uh, Alan Haynes and, and a lot of great, great Texas players are, uh, we all get together and, and play a giant concert for Stevie Ray, so. Why can't you get to go over in Europe and do the same thing here? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, <laughs> who knows, but, uh, but yeah, but then I'm, I'm, I'm headed back on the road, We're headed to Jakarta, Indonesia, playing the Jakarta Festival and then back over here in October to play mainly Germany and then, uh, and then the spring, we're uh, we're doing some dates. Uh, we're we're back in back in Germany. We do some stuff with Johnny Winter in May, and and uh, I think we're going to do some stuff with Jeff Beck in November. So you know, we're looking at some pretty good shows coming back over. So we're going to watch you closely. But first, the thing we're going to do is watch this show. Okay, great. Lance, thank you very much. For Blues Moose Radio. Right on, man. Thank you. Yeah. What y'all think? Is that the blues? All right.